Today's discussion enters the chilling world of the movie, The Bad Seed 2018. Even though this movie promises to be a horror thriller, it eventually descends into a labyrinth of disappointments and unexplained stupid logics. The show begins with Emma, the nine-year-old girl who watches a cat drown in the fountain beneath her bedroom. She simply draws the blind and prepares for her day because Emma is an emotionless kid and cares about nothing at all. At breakfast, we are introduced to her widowed father David where she expresses to her father her hope to win a citizenship medal handed out each year to a student who exemplifies the values of the school. David's sister Angela also shows up and brings up her recommendations for a new nanny since the last nanny had an unfortunate accident. All the talk seems to set off a little switch in Emma and she ends the conversation by revealing about that dead cat she saw earlier. David removes the cat from the fountain in horror, but Emma doesn't seem sad at all. We cut to Emma's school day where we see her sitting with one of the brilliant students, Milo. The other students are surprised by sudden appearance of a wasp, but Emma being a girl not afraid of bugs, captures it and leaves it out of the window, much to everyone's shock. Her teacher Mrs. Ellis thanks her for her efforts and Emma goes back to Milo who is also surprised by her fearless emotionless humanless behavior. In the meantime, David interviews a hot and beautiful babysitter for Emma. Her name is Chloe and she rather seems more interested in David than babysitting. He describes Emma as focused but focused isn't the right word for her because we all know that she is not normal and has no emotions. David then asks Chloe to join from the next week and she happily agrees. We cut back to Emma's school where we see her somewhat interested in her classmates. She intentionally bumps into one of the kids and steals her wristwatch while pretending to help her get back on her feet, revealing her inner hidden devil. We see that David also has a wasp nest in his house which will be focused later in the story. David brings her a cup of coffee at night and she gives him a smile before he goes to his room. However, we see that she was just faking her sweet appearance as she starts practicing her facial expressions in the mirror. She is learning and trying hard to give a convincing smile as if she is a sweet, innocent little girl. The merit day arrives, and we see David preparing her for the awards ceremony. Emma seems nervous for the results because she is too obsessive about winning the medal. Emma is seated in the crowd with Milo, certain that she will win the medal, but we all know what is going to happen next. To Emma's shock and disappointment, Mrs. Ellis announces that the winner of this year's medal is Emma's classmate Milo, and we start seeing a visually angry Emma. David then has a conversation with Mrs. Ellis who gives some interesting feedback on Emma. She states that Emma lives in her own little world and she can be an actress, which is a funny statement because otherwise she wouldn't be having a role in this movie. We later see all students and parents are celebrating outside and Emma expresses contempt for Milo to her father who scolds her for her bitterness. Emma immediately apologizes and pretends that she is happy for Milo. Emma then secretly guides Milo away from the party and through a nearby patch of trees until they reach rocky cliffs overlooking the sea. Milo almost walks to the edge of the cliff and Emma walks right behind him, causing the audience to anticipate a forthcoming threat. She slowly moves towards him, obsessively stares at his medal and murders him off-screen by pushing him into the sea. She apparently steals the citizenship medal from him and sneaks back into the party. Milo's body is found shortly thereafter by two girls who scream for help. Emma and David watch from a distance as people desperately try to resuscitate him and his mother breaks down into hysterics. David talks to his sister Angela about dead Milo at night and we clearly see a devil Emma standing in a corner but none of them is able to notice her because that's how dumb this movie is going to be. The next day, David asks Emma if she is feeling okay about what happened to Milo but Emma acts cheerily and neglects to talk about the matter with any kind of empathy. Angela suggests to David that Emma is in shock and will find time to grieve whenever she is ready. The new babysitter Chloe arrives at the same day and begins her job as a nanny. David gives her a brief tour of the house and she also gets introduced to Emma but their first encounter turns out to be a chilly one. During her first night in the house, Chloe strolls around the house like a stalker and steals some pills from David's bathroom. After a while, Emma and Chloe watch a film together and Chloe asks Emma how she feels about the dead kid. Emma coldly replies by saying that it doesn't matter how I feel because the kid is dead anyway. Emma further adds that she saw her stealing pills from her father's bedroom but promises to keep her secrets if she keeps hers. Emma utilizes this fact to manipulate Chloe into doing tasks for her such as getting her ice cream and letting her stay up past her bedtime. So we now learn that this nine-year-old kid knows how to blackmail people. The next day, everyone attends Milo's funeral and we see Emma sitting in the crowd showing no signs of sadness for the dead kid. David talks to Milo's mother after the funeral where we see Emma feigning sadness in front of them. Milo's mother reveals that she could not find the medal, assuming it sunk to the bottom of the sea. She then requests photos of Milo from the day of the ceremony from David. Later that night, David enters Emma's room and it is revealed that Milo's medal is hidden under Emma's bed. David bends down to pick up a little, but doesn't notice that medal. Emma suddenly enters, 
and uses her innocence to kick him out. David then peruses the photos he took during the award ceremony and notices Emma in the background of many of them looking at Milo and his medal with a contemptuous scowl and David grows concerned. It's so unrealistic that David literally took those perfect shots because the movie makers wanted him to get suspicious looking at them. The next day, Mrs. Ellis and an investigator arrive at David's house to ask him questions and Emma eavesdrop on the conversation. Mrs. Ellis explains that Milo was always afraid of water and that Emma was the last person to be seen with Milo, having been witnessed taking him into the woods. David becomes anxious and assumes they are insinuating something dark. Chloe also appears behind Emma in the next room, deducing that Emma killed Milo. In order to prevent the adults from discussing the matter further, Emma smashes a cookie jar and scratches her arm on broken glass, screaming and acting like she fell. Mrs. Ellis and the investigator promptly leave. David asks Emma if she knows anything about being out on the rock face with Milo, but Emma says she was never out there with Milo and that Mrs. Ellis is lying because she has always hated her. David departs from her room and we see that someone is stalking him around the house. He goes for a shower and as he returns, he is surprised by Chloe's weird appearance like a stalker. She says nothing and leaves. The next morning, we get another shot of that wasp nest because it's important in the movie. Chloe shows up in his work shed and apologizes to David for scaring him last night. She asks permission to smoke in the shed, but David forbids her from doing so because of the flammable stuff. She then talks about Emma and appreciates her because this dumb girl knows how innocent Emma is. Chloe then leaves without saying anything important, and we come to a conclusion that this scene didn't even need to exist in the movie. Whilst Emma and Chloe are out on a walk the same day, Chloe talks to Emma about what she did to Milo but Emma denies everything. Chloe and Emma spot Mrs. Ellis and the investigator arriving at Milo's house and Chloe says that Emma better get her story straight or they would capture her for murdering him. Emma sets her sight on Mrs. Ellis and this movie is so predictable that we all know what is going to happen next. Back at the house, Chloe and Emma are eating together and Chloe lies to Emma, saying that if she gets caught for murdering Milo, she will be put into a little electric chair for children that's been painted pink. Emma says she doesn't believe her but appears worried about the notion. After a while, Chloe looks for Emma around the house just after talking to her because kids in this movie disappear like the wind. It is also revealed that the wasp's nest is now missing, causing us to anticipate Emma's involvement in it. Anyway, Chloe keeps looking for Emma and magically comes across Milo's citizenship medal under Emma's bed. In the meantime, Mrs. Ellis is seen getting into her car and is continuously distracted by some wasps inside the vehicle. Okay, so here's the stupidest thing. The movie makers want us to believe that a nine-year-old kid successfully retrieved that wasp's nest and then put it inside a car even though the car was locked? What the hell is wrong with these horror movie plots? Anyway, Emma's strategy works and Mrs. Ellis crashes off screen. David returns home and goes to check if the serial killer is fine. He then goes to his room and we see that Chloe hanged Milo's medal from a lamp in David's room so that he will find it. Okay, here's a question. How did Chloe come to use this medal as a bait? Because if we focus on the previous events, we can clearly see that Chloe didn't even know the story of this medal. These movie makers can just drop anything in the plot to make things progress. Anyway, David is unable to notice the medal and Emma magically comes into his room for no reason. She literally looks towards the medal like she already knew about it and secretly tries to take it off, hiding it behind her back. David questions her as to what she is hiding and Emma finally shows him the medal because she is a nice kid whatsoever. Distressed, he interrogates her about where she got it and if she was out on the rock face with Milo. Emma admits that she was, but lies and says they played a game and Milo let her wear it for a short time but when she left the rock face, Milo didn't return and so she kept the medal. David calls his sister Angela to refer Emma to a child psychiatrist because he is extremely worried that Emma may have been involved in Milo's death and is concerned about her behavior. He also passes by Mrs. Ellis's crashed car but is unable to recognize her. The next day, David takes Emma to meet Milo's mother and makes her return the medal to her. Emma apologizes for keeping it and Milo's mother bursts into tears, completely unaware that she has a lunatic sitting right next to her. Milo's mother then reveals that Mrs. Ellis died because of a wasp's nest in her car which extremely frightens Emma, and she asks David to leave immediately. Regardless, Emma behaves cheerily outside and neglects everything like it never happened. Additionally, David is working in the shed when he notices the wasp's nest is missing, further confirming Emma's involvement in Mrs. Ellis's death. That night, he researches antisocial behavior in children and seems convinced that Emma's behavior is psychopathic. He takes Emma to visit a child psychiatrist and they talk in private while Emma sits outside the room. David is unable to clearly define Emma's condition to the psychiatrist but eventually says that Emma is lying to him and he cannot trust her anymore. The psychiatrist puts her reasons about child psychological illness and we see that Emma is clearly listening to their conversation. 
So what was the point of them talking in private when this serial killer could still hear everything? Can we get some logic in this movie at all? Anyway, the psychiatrist then talks to her in private where she acts normally to deceive her. David hears them laughing and cheering inside the room. The psychiatrist then assures David that Emma is 1000% normal and he is relieved. What a useless scene. They drive back home and we see Chloe exercising in a hot dress to seduce David when he returns. She talks to him in a flirtatious manner and dresses back to go see Emma. She later goes to Emma's room and taunts her by defining David as a dilf. Chloe adds that she wants to hook up with David and that one day she may become Emma's stepmother. Emma is disgusted and says that she is going to have David get rid of Chloe and we all know what is going to happen next in this extraordinary plot. That night, David is readying to leave for a date and Emma reveals the contents of the conversation to him. He assures her that what Chloe said isn't true and Emma states that she does not ever want to have a stepmother. Chloe is watching a film downstairs and searches for Emma because she is cute little kid. Seeing that the work shed lights are on, she goes out of the house and over to the shed and looks around inside for Emma. Emma locks her in and Chloe screams for help, even though the movie makers knew that there's another open door just in front of her. Anyway, Emma locks this door as well and sets the shed on fire. Chloe finally meets her fate and dies in the fire as Emma gleefully watches from the window. It's so irritating to see that this nine-year-old kid is planning her murders so perfectly and literally no one is able to suspect anything, even in the neighborhood. David rushes home, but the emergency services have already arrived. He is worried about Emma's safety, but discovers her completely fine and smiling. It's so stupid that David doesn't suspect anything at this moment, even though he is completely oblivious to Emma's antics. He later goes into Emma's room, and she is pretending to be asleep, but he questions her about the recent slew of deaths. Emma ultimately admits to murdering Milo, Mrs. Ellis, Chloe, and her previous babysitter who she didn't like. Emma justifies these murders, claiming she didn't do anything wrong. David finally sees his daughter's real psychopath personality and is completely heartbroken. The next morning, David receives a call from a suspicious detective who asks for a meeting regarding Chloe's death. However, David makes an excuse and postpones the meeting. Instead of telling everything to the police, David decides to take Emma to their lake house a few miles away, evading the suspicious detective. He doesn't want Emma to end up in an institution or in prison and plans something to escape the danger. They are welcomed by the caretaker who is surprised to see a full-grown nine-year-old serial killer. They settle themselves in the lake house and take some rest. David gets a FaceTime with his sister Angela and also discovers a revolver in the drawer, giving the impression that he is also planning to become a killer. What a stupid logic. He later receives a call from another detective who reveals that the fire was deliberately set in the shed and that they'll soon have clear evidences about the suspect. David eats some food with Emma later that day and once more receives a call from that detective, but he completely ignores it because he knows they are going to arrest Emma. David researches about child killers after a while, and Emma sneaks up on him, scaring him like a ghost. She once more confidently claims that she didn't do anything wrong and discusses her sadness that he doesn't trust her. To further give him a reason not to trust her, Emma attempts to set the lake house on fire while David is asleep. She switches on the gas fireplace as well as the iron stoves in the kitchen, attempting to kill David in an explosion. He wakes up in the morning before this can happen and switches everything back off. He finds Emma standing outside the house and confronts her about her acts. He says that he's the only person she has to which she coldly responds that she can live with her Aunt Angela, clearly emphasizing the fact that she can even kill her own father. This is how nine-year-old kids behave in movies. Anyway, David takes her back inside the house and plans to kill her and then himself. He crushes some medicine and puts it into Emma's hot chocolate, but Emma asks for additional whipped cream, and the stupid David leaves both cups alone with Emma. They both drink their chocolates and Emma goes to bed. David has a last soulful conversation with Emma, in which he says that her mother always did whatever she wanted to do in order to save Emma's life. He ends the conversation by saying that they will soon go somewhere safe, and we all know what that means. He calls his sister Angela and reveals everything to her, but she doesn't believe him because Emma is just a nine-years-old kid. David tells her that he cannot let Emma spend her life in a jail or institution, so he has protected her in a better way. Later at night, David sleeps in his room when we see Emma wide awake. She rushes to her dad's room to set up what would look like he committed suicide by shooting himself. However, this perfect serial killer successfully misses the shot even though she made no mistakes in her previous crimes. David wakes up, and she reveals that she switched those chocolate mugs without him noticing. So these movie makers are now making us believe that this nine-year-old kid could tell the future, so she sensed her father's plans and switched those mugs. I think it's time to leave this planet. Anyway, he tries to chase her and Emma calls 911, pretending to be in danger and screaming that her dad is trying to kill her. She locks herself in the bathroom as David goes after her, 
and asks her to open the door. He breaks the door with a kick and points the gun at her, but the useless caretaker intervenes with his shotgun from nowhere like a ghost. David claims that Emma is evil and a standoff begins. A long monologue later, David is shot and killed by the caretaker. Emma drops more fake tears as we hear police sirens in the background, and the authorities arrive at the most right time. The next morning, as David's body is being removed, Angela and the detectives believe that David had mental issues. Emma sits solemnly in the back of a car and hugs her Aunt Angela, staring into the camera with a cold and victorious grin. Okay, here's a final thing. What about all those evidences retrieved by these useless detectives that Emma was involved in Chloe's death and all other murders? The movie makers simply ignored all of it, and this nine-year-old serial killer walks away with unexplained stupid logics left in the air.